I go by she, hers. I am Master Sensei Joanne Dao. I teach Shorn Ryu Karate, which is an Okinawan style derivation of white crane kung fu. So it's considered a soft style, which is just to say that I'm not fighting center line to center line. I have been practicing for 14 years, and I keep track of this because my nieces are the exact ages of how long I've been practicing and how long I've been teaching. So, and I will be, it's coming up five years as a instructor, so properly of the sensation. I teach at the Shoreview MCA, I teach for Taproots, and I also do private lessons for students. Um, my main focus is on smaller bodies uh, in terms of martial arts and defense against, you know, attacks that are common against women and also children. I started because my brother was getting bullied as a child and I was also such a small statured kid that my dad sent us both into karate at the YMCA. He himself has also been a martial artist in judo, and so it was kind of like a family bonding situation as well as a safety precaution. You just want to make sure that we knew how to throw and be thrown, and at some point, like trick shots. We were at the YMCA one day, because I've been a member of the YMCA since I was like six or seven years old, and there's these kindergarten chairs, like the plastic ones with the metal legs, and he would stack them and like both height and length, and we would have to be able to jump over them like you know, uh, kung fu, uh, like uh, acrobats, and then be able to do a roll. And it just became a higher stack and a longer stack. And hopefully you didn't get caught with, with the, the chairs. Or he would flip us off his back, and so we would learn rolls that way. But it was very important for him, both on a, what do you call, gross movement, proprioception type of, of deal. And it kept us busy. So, But every, everyone on my dad's side of the family has some level of martial arts in their childhood or and even some in their adulthood. My aunt in Colorado is a kung fu person and so sometimes we do some tai chi movements together but it wasn't until I was like well into my martial arts journey did we you know have something to to go back and forth about especially when I was doing pressure point work. I am well under 5'5 five five, so I am a petite Asian woman and I don't have a lot of mass or height that I can take advantage of to fight center line to center line. So it is not to say that the soft style is any less devastating, if anything, I would argue more, but it is a way that someone who's smaller stature, lower weight can use to strategize as a fighter. You now strategies of what works for us. I don't have the extra hundred pounds to, to move around. I have to move way more efficiently, but because of the movement I have, it helps other trainers figure out to make their movements also efficient find out what works for them. It's rarefied air. You don't see people like me very much. And what's offered to women, it's offered to a lot of non-men then bodies is just like a one-off workshop and you know, good luck, you're on your own. And you need to practice. <laughs> like, I don't know how to emphasize this more is that the opportunity to practice um, and to really get good at it. So it becomes like muscle memory, not because I want us to get into a fight, but like, I want us to be you know, adequately prepared. And a lot of what is offered to women is men grabbing women or women, sorry, women acting as the bad guy grabbing men. And the men are like, oh, you just like flick your wrist like this. And like, I can't do that. Before talking about, you know, hey, I was pinned on the ground. And the problem is, is when someone else is like, oh, you just need to do this with your body. You're not a small person. We don't have the same thing. I don't have the same length to leverage. So you can't just be, oh, just do this. And that matters, like the physics matters in this. So having someone like me in the teaching circle that I'm in, we can we can workshop things. We can think about, okay, well, if it works for you, it should work for a lot of other people. <laughs> but if it doesn't work for you, we can't keep this in the curriculum. So I became the litmus for curriculum for like a really long ass time until I started building my own. and. Yeah, that's that's my passion is how do we get things to work for small bodies? And I am happy to take scenarios. I'm happy to workshop them because it's part of my black belt. I won't get my next black belt for another 15 years. I think Grandmaster is, you know, minimum 40 years old. So I still have a lot of work to do. And this 
it's this body of work and it's going into the dojo every day. It's just as much learning for the students as it is, you know, for me as an instructor. I have eight-year-old students right now in person that I teach and they force me to flip movement on its head. I had to learn how to teach break falls because they were afraid of falling. It's like, how do we get over this? Uh, and it, it does, it forces me to, you know, think creatively. And so when we talk about martial arts as an art, this is the art part. This is the creative part that makes me so happy and so excited to be here. Yeah, hi everyone. I am Jimmy. I go by he, him pronouns. And I've been doing Muay Thai since 2013. You know, just casually first for my own health. And I've always done martial arts on and off my whole life. You know, with the more traditional martial arts, uh, Taekwondo, Aikido, and then Kenpo Karate in my early teens. And I just fell in love with, with Muay Thai, with the movement. I always thought elbows were cool. You know, that movie on Bach was the one that got me to even like really discover Muay Thai in the first place because it looks so different than the other, you know, martial arts movies I've seen. So I kind of fell in love with elbow striking then and that's still like my thing. I like using elbows. I started training for competition towards the end of like 2016 and it was just a way for me to heal myself. I was just starting my own mental health journey and going to therapy and and it was just you know, a way for me to really find something new to commit to and it made me believe in myself after you know signing up for my first no pressure no winner type you know smoker event where no one wins it's just there to kind of like you know a more glorified sparring match and no knockouts allowed but it definitely built up my confidence and having you know a coach having someone just believe in you you know really makes a difference i kind of really fell in love with like community aspects and even when i started when i first started i started in like a more old style muay thai and what that means is muay thai is a generic term kind of like karate even like Kung Fu, it's just an umbrella term for the martial arts of that nation, of those people. And so there's various different styles and just like I'm sure Jayan can attest with Okinawa and martial arts, there's very distinct styles. Even every instructor probably has a different focus. So I've always kind of learned two different styles and I think what people are more used to seeing is like the sport style where there's a rule set. And I like the sport competitive side of it because to me it's very consensual and fair and there's a rule set we have to play by. But I'm very well aware that what happens in the ring is you know, not exactly the same that happens in real life. My first two years, I learned kind of an older style where I basically take that rule set out and it resembles more traditional Kung Fu and Karate in the sense that we're striking, you know, different areas. We're fighting dirty in a sense because it's a self-defense. You want to use least energy, the most effective targets you can. So, you know, like the throat, targeting like the inner thigh, all these little things that you really wouldn't see in sport Muay Thai. And just like Joanne mentioned, I was always, you know, shorter than average, even when I'm competing. I stand like 5'8-ish, but, you know, my fighting stance covered up a little. I'm like 5'5", five five. so I've always been the shorter one, and it's forced me to kind of always, like, be a little bit more aggressive in the sense that, like, the techniques that work for me that I like to teach for smaller people are techniques that are, you know, very close range, even the sport aspect. I can't really stay far from someone because they'll just keep me long, so I have to really commit and get in. And that's why I prefer elbows and knees because again, someone taller than me, it makes them very uncomfortable and I kind of feel confident in that zone because especially in the ring, I, I get confidence when I'm like holding onto them and throwing knees because to me, I can feel them like breathing heavier and I can tell they don't like it. So a lot of my style is kind of informed around that and like, I don't really punch the head either too much. I kind of use that as a distraction because I've learned not to count on that really like knocking someone out. And I've learned to like, yeah, really enjoy like soft targets in the body, liver shots, the diaphragm. I always wanted to kind of teach more of the self-defense side, the things that I learned, you know, the dirty Muay Thai. And that's why I'm excited to teach for tap roots and create a new community that doesn't have that toxic sports culture, that hyper-masculine gendered constructs that the mainstream martial arts community can, uh, in the sport world, can place. And I've been teaching since uh, the end of 2017, up until uh, 2019 when I got injured. And then I haven't been teaching since because COVID happens, but I definitely have a passion for teaching. And when I teach, it's not like, oh, I have a set curriculum. I'm always constantly like learning. You know, I love learning from Joanne. Um, I'm always constantly learning and refining and also learning from like students and, and teammates. I remember teammates that, you know, couldn't kick or they would kick and just fall down. And some of them are now, you know, surpassing me in skill and, you know, winning fight at the night um, type of thing. And I, I love that. So, so that's kind of my philosophy is I also learn from students and I feel like as I'm developing curriculum for Taproots, I feel like I'm going to also learn a lot from Joanne, from Dad, from 
you know, you participants that come on, and that will really kind of shape our curriculum. And yeah, I'm very excited about that.